Now, President Donald Trump loves getting rid of Obama-era regulations. That is, unless he gets paid to keep them. Uh, so now, this is according to an interesting article that just came out today in Salon. Uh, now, according to watchdog groups, the Trump administration has uh, agreed to support Obama-era environmental, uh, environmental regulations after receiving money from a trade group that spent over $700,000 at Trump's uh, Miami resort. So this trade group goes in and says, well, we like this regulation, so we're going to spend a lot of money at, at one of your resorts. And now suddenly the, the Trump administration goes, oh, yeah, no, Obama regulations, love them. Love them. Let's keep it. Uh, so now you guys know, and we've been reporting on this, Trump hates Obama regulations. He's been getting rid of them. In fact, the New York Times counted at least 95 environmental rules that were targeted by Trump, including many intended to roll back greenhouse gas emissions. Keep that in mind, by the way. Now, Trump also famously pulled out of the Paris Climate Accords. Uh, but apparently, in order to save all of that, all we had to do was just go to Trump's Miami Doral Resort and spend tens of or, or hundreds of thousands of dollars. That goes right into Trump's pocket. I'm so easy. We could have saved all these regulations. All right. Anyway, here's some details. Now, in 2016, the Obama administration signed on to what's called the Kigali Amendment in the Montreal Protocol. Uh, now, that's a 30-year-old treaty aimed at fixing the hole in the Earth's ozone layer. Well, it worked. We got together, and we did repair the hole in the ozone layer. I, I mean, a, a great victory for environmentalism, right? Uh, and, of course, of all these governments working together towards a common goal to protect the environment. Uh, so now, um, the Kigali Amendment had required phasing at the, da uh, the phasing down of hydrofluorocarbons, or HFCs. Now, those are greenhouse gases that are primarily used in things like air conditioners and refrigerators, or had been used before the Kigali Amendment. So now you have all of these, you know, new air conditioners and, and new refrigerators, car air conditioners, et cetera, uh, that are now using things that are not HFCs, right? Uh, and so now the State Department under Donald Trump had announced in 2017 that Trump continued to back the amendment by the most explicit and public way yet. So they said, Kigali Amendment? Oh, yes, we absolutely love the Kigali Amendment. Uh, the best thing the Obama uh, administration has done ever. Uh, we back it explicitly. But it turns out the reason that they did uh, back it explicitly is it was after heavy lobbying from the Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigerating Institute. That is a trade group that represents heating and cooling product manufacturers. Now, in this case, the lobbyists are actually on the the side the good side they're the good guys and because they're saying oh no we 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 like that amendment we hate the fact that there is um you know that 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 there could be a hole in the ozone layer uh and of course look they also hate the fact that uh in, in their eyes it could reduce manufacturing right because they've all switched over to something different now and so a change in the rules would not be beneficial to them whatsoever so now, um, in fact, he, here's what they said about this. Uh, the United States believes the Kigali Amendment represents a pragmatic and balanced approach to phasing down the production and consumption of HFCs before and therefore we support the goals and approach the, uh, of the amendment. That was the State Department back in 2017. The AHRI praised the administration for backing the amendment one day later, and the group had increased its lobbying spending after Trump had taken office, spending more than 840000 in 2017 and more than $1 million in both 2018 and 2019, according to data from the Center for Responsive Politics. Along with the increased spending to lobby the president, the group also spent more than $700,000 at the Trump National Doral Resort for its annual meeting in 2017, according to a tax return 
flagged by Crew. That is a, a watchdog group. The payment was made less than two weeks before the Trump administration announced its support for the policy. So apparently all you have to do is go and spend money at Trump's bedbug resort. Remember, the, the Doral is known as the bedbug resort because they had a huge problem there. But this lobbyist group, they says, well, how do we get to Donald Trump? Well, I know. We go spend a ton of money at his resorts because Donald Trump has not divested from his businesses, right? Uh, yes, he has his sons that run it, but he hasn't divested, which means that money goes back into his pockets. It is clear personal corruption, and these companies know it. And, and at least in this case, you had a group, that a trade group, that was actually doing the right thing, yes, for selfish reasons, but was saying, well, you know what? No, we're going to keep this regulation to actually reduce greenhouse gases. And so we're going to lobby you and bribe you in the way that we know how, because you, we know that you're the most receptive to it in this way in order to keep that. I mean, it's just, it's so obvious corruption, right? So now what's interesting about this is that it didn't work. Now the policy had stalled because the administration has failed to submit the amendment to the Senate. So maybe there's a, you know, a lot of the other Republicans who didn't get money from this are saying, oh, no, we, it, it's still an Obama regulation, so we still absolutely hate it, right? Now, that goes to the H uh, AHRI planning another big event at Trump's resort, advertising a, quote, leadership forum scheduled for 2021. The AHRE event was one of 120 events held by special interest groups at Trump's properties, according to tracking by crew. So this shows, of course, just how many of these companies are doing this very thing. The groups and political campaigns and committees have spent millions at Trump's properties since he took office, despite spending next to nothing at Trump properties in the years preceding 2016, because they know how to bribe him. The Trump re-election campaign has also paid millions to the president's own properties, Trump even proposed holding the next G7 summit at the Doral Resort before caving in the face of bipartisan pressure and international criticism. So, look, uh, I think it's, it's obvious corruption. Obvious corruption is obvious. Uh, yes, these companies know exactly how to reach Donald Trump to try to get things done. And of course the kind of person that Trump is, is that he has no core beliefs. His only core belief is, how is it going to benefit me? What am I going to get out of it? And so I guess, look, if you're Tom Steyer, think about this, right? If you're Tom Steyer, you care about the environment, right? You care about climate change. Why don't you just go and spend a million dollars at Trump's Doral result, Resort and say, if we do that, though, I want you to go take us back into the Paris Climate Accord. I wonder if that would happen. I wonder if that would work. I mean, it's only a million dollars or a hundred million dollars. I think Tom Steyer, what? He's worth several billion dollars at this point. I guess, why not at this point? There's going to be corruption. Might as well use it to your advantage. Okay, anyway. And I'm kidding about that, uh, by the way. Um, I think we should get all the money out of politics. And uh, because, and, and not only that, but Donald Trump out of office. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.